Life is good. So yeah, happy Friday. It is Friday, the 16th of February, 2018. This is your daily Forex trading strategy session here at Forex Stock Today. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, however, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. I'm trying to get my chair. There we go. It's not necessarily indicative of future results. But please always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money. You cannot afford to lose. Oh, that feels so much better. My name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you so much for being a client. If you are not part of our family, please visit TradersWay.com. Open a demo account today. We have fast execution speeds, very competitive fees and spreads. Uh, world-class customer service, and you got little old me every single day, Monday through Friday, helping you put together your trade plans, learning how to build skills like patience and discipline, and just basically have someone ask questions. So I'm going to go re uh, review some of your trade plans today, and try to give you some one-on-one uh, -on -one feedback. I guess it's one on some, isn't it? So anyways, uh, we care about you, we want you to succeed, and uh, we want to earn your loyalty and respect so that we can be the a broker for your successful Forex trading business for years and years and years and years and years and years to come. Uh, let me share my screen. Share screen. So anyways, I can tell you your old broker doesn't love you. I love you. Care for you. I think that's a form of love. I want you to succeed. Isn't that sort of a form of love? Well, I love you. Yeah. No, you're my sweet baby. You're special. <laughs> we are. All right. Good. Ich gut. Yeah. Ich gut. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, what we can do, I suppose, is uh, well, before we go through my charts, let's take a look at what you guys are doing. I want to point out once again the new feature. There are two analysts that are following the market in real time on your behalf. Just have to click on alerts. Oh, there's Brooks Post. Very nice. And so Olympia. Oslan, I guess, isn't on board yet. But Olympia has been watching since uh, 2 o'clock in the morning New York time, which is just before the London Open. He's been watching the market, watching the news, and making real-time posts on your behalf. But here's ours on from yesterday's New York session. So you have an analyst that's posting live through the uh, London morning and through the New York morning, which is basically the whole trading day, right? The whole London session. So uh, please take advantage of that. Without further ado, Brooke, is this the one you want to do, USD CAD? Sweet. All right, let's take a look. All right, chart intensive. Uh, all right, so I don't know your thoughts because you didn't write anything. Uh, well, you wrote some. Uh, do, as you know, I've been buying USD CAD for quite some time now, and I believe we are at support for a new swing higher. Okay. Here are the setups. Great. So I can't read that. I don't know what time frame this is. Okay, so little things like that. I just I don't know what time frame this is. I can't see that. Uh, four hour, I guess. Okay. Yeah, four hour and lower. I'm just pointing out. 
I, uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to decipher this. That's all. Cool. Yeah. All right. So a couple of things. I can see that you're thinking this. All right. You're using this area here as support. It's also going to be about a 50%, right? Okay, that's cool. I would also look at this. And you'll see that that's a 618. And it's a, a central pivot point. Okay. We do know it's it's moving technically because you can see this area that you've properly identified uh, did act as resistance. It was respected. And you can, on this time frame, declare that that was the old high, that was the old high, and that was the old high, right? And now we're up here. So you can declare that a higher high, which means if you are a bull, you are allowed to go for the higher low. Okay, so that point, uh, check. Got it. Looks good. Let's move to the next time frame because now you, so I call that basically a strategy. Okay, you have your strategy set, you have your buy set, you're buying US dollar or and or you're selling you um, Canadian dollar. Okay, and you've waited for a higher high to set up the higher low. So your strategy is set now that you're at a potential area for a higher low, right? So now it's tactics. If you do get an opportunity to buy here, what would that look technically, all right? So strategy and tactics, strategic and tactical Forex trading. So we're dropping now into an hour. You're showing here that this is sort of a bottomish. okay? That's fine. It hasn't quite happened yet on this time frame. You are thinking about having to go up in here, range a little bit, and then break out. I'm okay with that thought, right? Especially if you um, if you draw it from here. Okay, this used to be uh, resistance, then it became support. Okay, it's probably going to be uh, respected one more time, and I like the idea. Although the other thing to wait for would be a breakout pullback like that okay but I like the idea more often than not it consolidates before a breakout okay and this is essentially the same thing right so you have multiple moving averages here that's cool uh, do you use your oscillator book all right cool so what does this tell you Okay, I would like to know why, it, but there's there's nothing here that would, I mean, I have to read your mind, right? It says buy, well, did that say buy, did that say buy, did that say buy? So anyways, um, ooh, what is all this junk? All right, uh, I, you have a MACD histogram? All right, uh, okay. I don't know what settings those are either, MACD. What uh, what two EMAs is your uh, MACD measuring? You have 21.558. So it's just measuring, uh, I mean, you, I see that you have a divergence going on, right? So like, you should really mark this, mark your divergence. If that's part of your bullish plan, Uh, what time frame are we looking at now? Is it 15? Yeah, 15. So this tells me you're two hours away. So I'm okay with this idea now of yours that uh, you say 
you, you expect it to break, but it's going to take some time. Uh, I would actually, uh, on a 15 minute chart, I think you've overdone it because your oscillator says it'll do sort of this. Okay. And this part, um, let's see. In fact, it doesn't say that. Hang on. Let me clear this out. Your oscillator says this. Uh, I guess it can go up a little further. And then I think it's just gone like this. Okay. So we'll see. And then lower is just pulling. All right, cool. So now you're doing this for WTI. So if you're shorting CAD, you believe oil's coming down. You got that correct. That's good. Uh, it's a little tricky here selling such a big rally, but you're playing it as a fib, I suppose. The, the real resistance is a little further up. So you're going to bet on the rig count today then. And that's not till gee, this afternoon, right? Yeah, do you think it's monkey the middle? Yeah, and here it is. Um, I think it's going to come down to the rig count, right? To really drop this, we're going to need, a, um, we're going to need sort of a, an assumed, or what they call expected, E star, uh, expected increase in supply from an increase in rig count. And the rig count, is, when is it? 4 p.m.? No, I know, Brooke, but you're still going to need that to come down. Were you going to sell Canadian dollar while oil rallies, right? So you got to time all these things. <clears throat> so maybe you're right. Maybe we get a sort of a false rally, then a hiccup, and then we'll wait for the rate count, and then boom. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so a little more detail. I don't like uh, reading minds. Um, just ask my wife. I'm terrible at it. Okay. I'll give you a like. It's good detail. Multiple time frames. Well, generally, spe uh, generally speaking, right, um, Oil inventories have traditionally gone up this time of year. That's all I can say, historically speaking. So, yeah, that could, I mean, that could be, that could be my bias. I don't know what your bias is, right? But I could include that. But you'd have to look at the trend, right? Why don't you look at the trend of rate counts? Um, look at uh, EIA and IEA reports. I get uh, weekly reports sent to me. So, you know. So anyways, thank you for sharing that. Guys aren't reading stuff, huh? 
Well, this doesn't tell me anything. Break out of the... So this analysis, whoever posted this, Mark, I don't like it at all. I don't know why you would draw it this way. I guess to each his own. Um, you know, I would, if I were me, I would just sort of trap it. Okay. For me to draw this type of pattern, I would want to see a very dramatic, um, very dramatic uptrend into it. But sideways and squeezing it, I think that's dangerous. So if you were going to try something, I would kind of let it do this and then let it do this and let it do this. If I were me. Yeah, Katie, if you were looking for screenshot software, um, I mentioned, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, Snagit cost 50 bucks. I think now it only costs 25. Um, but they just launched a new version, an updated version, and it's the best, and it's 25 or 50 bucks. Um, and, it's, and it's awesome, right? But yeah, there are cheaper stuff as well. And of course, Windows has screenshot software built in called uh, Snippet or something. All right. Snip. Snipping tool. Uh, uh, where's my? Okay. So I can just go. Ah, I've got my drawing tool on. So now I can just go. Look, there's my screenshot, and I just did it. Now it's got really lame drawing tools, but it's got something, right? And then you just save it. Okay. That's just built in the windows. Yeah. So it should be a really easy process, right? And of course, let's see if I go to pictures. Okay. I can do this. You just drag it on. And I'm, I'm already doing a post. Isn't that cool? Is that cool? So that's how you do a post on Forex.today. You drag an image onto it, and you're done. Okay, so... Uh, 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 all right. So let's move on. Dot com. <clears throat> okay. Pound dollar. Nothing's really changed. Sort of a. Uh, it's a good setup for bears. 
the top is a little too high, the bottom's a little too low for, for this euro yen. Okay, just notice how we're kind of halfway through the month, we're through CPI. Well, Ted, if that's true, um, that trade plan of his should be self-evident. That was really dumb. <laughs> I'm going to throw in a wedge in the middle of a range. Do people actually do that? Hmm. But... <laughs> I'm going to wedge a range. All right. Yeah, but why don't you respond? Like, you look at that, why wouldn't you put in the, like, why, you know, putting a wedge in the middle of a range makes no sense. Put, leave a comment. Right? Show that you're thinking about it. Show, that's what participation means. Do you like someone's trade plan? Yes or no. If you don't, put it. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so it's a little too far, a little too something, everything sort of something, something, something. Looking at the USD yen, okay, this is the target, guys. Okay. This is the target. Got to go... There we go. So according to what I see here, our actual, uh, oops, I guess white tools won't work here. There we go. Uh, the actual target is this. Because of this high, right, then this is the, the low, which is, uh, let's just call it 105. 105. Even 105.50, depending on how aggressive you are. But so there's less than a there's left on that, depending on if you're conservative or aggressive. The top tells me you can be aggressive. Okay, that's fine. Right. Let's take a look at CAD. Life is great. Life is grand. Life is good. So somebody uh, uh, was a broke selling CAD. It's funny. I look at this and it feels like it's going to go up next week. What would make Canadian dollar go up next week? I would guess a monster rally in the U.S. stock market. So Barry says a shift in demand. How about a shift in perceived demand? Right, because remember with the markets, facts are not that <laughs> significant since the market is emotional, right? So it's the perceived demand. Oh my God, look at the stock market. The stock market's huge rally. There's going to be deep demand. There's going to be awesome, and, right? And that's, that's all it is, so. 
Um, or yen weakness, but that would also need a monster stock market rally, um, not just in the U.S., but globally. And they're usually tied together. Yeah, well, see, all of that to me, right? So Ryan just mentioned three or four other things. To me, it's all the same thing, so whatever. I think it's the czar that's going to move the world markets. It's the Rand is just going to like lead. Hmm. All right. Jay Powell is going to call up all his experts. What's going on with the Rand? What's going on? I got an FOMC meeting coming up. I need to know the Rand. And he's got three phones, right? Rand, tell me about the Rand. Yeah. There was a probably on three occasions I've watched uh, the South African Central Bank host their meetings. Did you know that? Like you can actually watch the, their meetings and stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, and it looks like you know a, a 1970s um, <laughs> uh, you know drama TV show or something. <laughs> <I'm> like. <laughs> It's like some dude the camcorder, <laughs> you know. Uh, how about the website, Maddie boy? Uh, is the central bank still run by a woman? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So anyways, uh, boom. So it's been a while since I watched it. Right? But it's kind of, you know, it's the quality of, like, if you're hanging out in Siberia, <laughs> like deep Siberia in some town that used to make nuclear bombs, and, uh, and you're like, hmm, nothing really to do in my free time. Maybe I'll turn some TV on. <laughs> <laughs> right? And like you'd get like South African Central Bank TV. You're like, it's a reality show. <laughs> You're like, wow, this is so interesting. So, anyways, look at these targets, man. Targets hit, target hit. Right? Like Kiwi again, done. Um this is just in like nomads land. What's going on here, Ozzy, huh? Just fast and furious. It's just gone. But hard to cover what's going to happen, right? Let's update this, maybe. You are not alone. So they're so sold here. So it really comes down to where we are later today. This could be a sell or a buy. Where it's sitting isn't necessarily good. Um, see, if I was a bear, I would want it to sell it a little higher. That's pretty awesome, though, off, that, off the 4-hour 21. And it's been so bearish. So I guess if I was a bear on this, I would sell it kind of nowish, and I'd have to be more aggressive. Uh, so I would be going for S2. But even that's going to be difficult because look at the pivots. Let's kind of go through this. Even though it's been down, and particularly we know this setup is on a monthly swing, so the monthly swing traders are fine uh, and, in fact, pretty happy. Uh, but look at the weekly, guys. Um, there's the top and there's the bottom. So how should we measure this? So we, we have a CPP top and an S1 bottom for the week right now. Um, that's pretty lame, isn't it? So... Is this the beginning of something like that? Uh, it's too early to tell. 
Right now we're below the four hour 21. We seem to be respecting that 21. So uh, I would fire for effect and, and break that support and widen these pit, um, pivots. Okay, so I think I'd stay short probably here and if, if I'm lucky enough, probably jam my stop and let it run next week as well. One would rather be buying that and I'm totally, absolutely okay with that. Um, not now. Um, I think we should have a move yet. I mean, this, this just isn't low enough. We're supposed to be down here, okay? Yeah. So if I were to do a swing trading group, I'm thinking maybe we should do this noon on Fridays. Although that might be a good time to be golfing. So I'm trying to struggle. I'm struggling to find the right time. Well, Sunday night. Maybe Sunday nights are just better. I don't know. Yeah. The only thing is you can get into these trades on a Friday. But then we, we face gap risk, right? So, yeah, I'm thinking maybe Sunday is better. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking about today is the uh, having you guys trade as portfolio managers so you can actually ha develop a track record instead of just like tr trading like, like a video game, trading with a purpose. Uh, so you have that track record. Plus, I think you'll just become a better trader by virtue of trading properly. Uh, my original thought was, you know, to have like pre-scheduled times with you once or twice, well, twice a year. Um, but what if I made it sort of cheaper and if you need my help, you book my time? And you pay, you pay that way. You know what I mean? Right? So let's say it's like 1200 a year or something. Uh, and if you need my time if you, you know, and I happen to be available, I can sit down for an hour, review your trade history with you, and give you some suggestions and all that kind of stuff. And I don't bake it in. So instead of like 2400 a year, it's 1200 a year or something. And you, if I'm available and you need me, right? Online, Barry, they have this thing called the internet. <laughs> Where would we meet? <laughs> uh, the coffee shop down your street, Barry. Do you have a Tim Hortons? Come on, Barry. Yeah, Skype, you got it, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I don't know what's left. <laughs> it's true, Barry. <laughs> At the cigar shop, yeah. Yeah, let's... Meet up at the Tim Hortons, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told you, right? They offered me a, a trip around the world on their private jet. They're talking about how big their seats are and all beautiful Italian leather, beautiful stitched, you know, all designed by the Four Seasons design team. And the, the, they have ottomans for the chairs that have little storage areas. I'm like, what? You have ottomans? Guess how much it is. It's a, a three-week trip around the world, staying at the Four Seasons, flying on the private jet. What's it cost per person? Three weeks, 
nine locations. You guys are so funny. Yeah, Guy's got it. It's $140,000 per person, assuming you're traveling in a pair, and like $165 if you're flying solo. $165,000. Yeah, you guys are so funny. Ten thousand bucks. <laughs> I can spend ten thousand bucks, you know, three days in one location. That's not even flying. Thousand bucks is a is a bar tab at the pool for a day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think the most expensive hotel. I've, I never paid for was uh, the Burj Al Arab, and I think it was, I think it was eight thousand dollars for the night. But it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. I had a full size snooker table in the room. I'm like, look at that, a snooker table in the pool, and there's a billiard room. Come check that out. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I had a white Rolls Royce. Anyways, who cares about that crap? Uh, let's move on. Let's take a look at some other things. There used to be a video on um, Facebook, but I, I think something happened to my Facebook account. It doesn't exist anymore, I think. Uh, Facebook. Um, um. there I think they killed it yeah it's weird it's just all of a sudden my Facebook's not there anymore um, anyways there used to be a video on that it was really cool I don't know if it exists anywhere else anymore thank you Facebook all right let's take a look at our other things um, we've hit our target, right? Done for the week. Beautiful little, right? Beautiful little trade. I think one of you guys had this as your plan or, and or we talked about this yesterday to wait for the pullback and then rally it up into here. Yeah, they, they're, they're all set to expire after like six months, right? Barry says, how do you delete your Facebook? I don't know. Someone else, <laughs> Facebook took it down. I, I don't know. I don't use social media. So I had all these accounts, you know, 10,000 people following me. And then one day it's not there. And I'm like, mm, all right. So, I don't know. So, hey, boom, boom. Okay. That's interesting, right? So, if you're a bull, you need to have it come back quite a bit. And if you're a bear, you're kind of set to sell. This is a... So let's talk about it for bears. Let's talk about the future. Okay, it's bullish. Great. What are bulls supposed to do here? Now, I'm pretty sure we talked about it either yesterday or Wednesday about this pullback after the breakout. I think one of you guys even had a plan, uh, a plan, right? But anyways, what is a bull supposed to do at that spot? Especially on a Friday for crying out loud. What does it scream? Right? Yeah, take profit. Thank you. Okay. So you could be scalping that short or could have already of, right? It's a little late now, but there's that's definitely something you could be watching. If you're tactically trading, if you're an income trader, aka a scalper, you could be like hot to go H O T T O G O on that and say, well, 
this is where bulls are supposed to take profit, right? So you can just sit there, wait, and start to hunt their stops. Because this is what's happening now is their stops are being hunted, which forces them out of their long trades anyways, right? But here's the interesting thing. You could actually trade this all the way down to here. Okay. And what do you think bulls are going to do there? Oh, see? So we'll be here next Friday. And that's going to get interesting, huh? What do you think? People are pinging me. Why so many people are pinging me? I think maybe my village is being raided. Gee whiz! Thank you for interrupting. The sound of money. Yeah. An angel just got his wings. Yeah. So that would be a very interesting top, huh? What about dumping this? Well, if you're going to dump this, if you're thinking Aussie weakness, U.S. dollar strength over the coming bit, um, this would also be interesting because it's still a sell, right? But what if we end up doing this next week? I'm looking at that as pretty credible, too. And this is our Fib Wars area, isn't it? That is very plausible as well. Okay. But did you see some indications on some other charts that maybe there's a monster dollar weakness, monster stock market rally in the worth? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it. But these are the situations where you need to really, truly decide, are you a bull or a bear? Uh, and look. I can't tell you it's easy. It's never easy, and you need you're you're asking to make a career of making decisions like this. So you might as well fake it and pretend you right and make a decision. Even if you feel like you're not qualified, you should still practice making the decision. Okay. You have to say it's it's up or it's down okay and something's going on because it's happening at a very specific price so right it's not a random walk cool Czar still moving. That's great. Gold still going up. That's great. So I said, I said this area. So here's my guess. It's still there. And look what actually happened. How close was it to this? Perfect. So I picked this, it was this. That's the difference, huh? I, I picked this as the support, but it was this. 
So do you think this wick is random? Okay. Look at the pivot, S1. So that puts our top for this period, which I believe is a month. It's now telling me gold's going to top out at 1375. Well, actually, 13, $1,372.68. About <laughs> roughly. We did this one already. See, there's lots of targets hit, huh? of a Friday. Euro USD, same thing. Look at that. Beautiful swing, guys. Holy crap. Spanish official just noting that they'll present the budget only if it can pass it. Spanish government official making comments. This bottom predicts this top. How beautiful. And we'll lead off with the housing starts looking for 1.23 million, up 3.5%. Followed up with the building permits, the export price index, the import price index, and then we'll go on to the Canadian December data. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds to the data. We'll lead off with U.S. housing starts for the month of January, looking for up three and a half percent to one point two three million. Three two million in housing starts, up nine point seven percent, better than expected. Building permits at one point three nine million, up seven percent, also better than expected. Export prices up zero point eight percent month over month, and three point four percent year over year. Import prices up one point zero percent month over month, and three point six percent year over year. Back month revised higher for import prices. Canada International Securities minus one point nine seven billion in manufacturing sales, at minus zero point three percent. Returning to the housing starts, we saw a back month revision slightly higher as well to 1.209 million from 1.19 million. And the building permits were essentially revised slightly lower at 1.3 million. But again, a beat on both building permits and housing starts, and we're seeing the import and export price data come in ahead of expectations, running hotter as we saw with the CPI and the PPI earlier this week. Just known on the Canada International Securities transaction, the back month was revised slightly lower to 19.2 billion, and manufacturing sales were revised higher to up 3.8 percent from 3.4 percent. The dollar cad holding at the highs of the day 
the dollar index overall holding at the highs of the session 8887 after making a new multi-year low at 8825 we're up about 60 cents from the recent lows in the dollar index once again the reaction in the bond market relatively muted despite the hotter than expected price is on imports and exports 10-year note hit a high today in 120.19. We backed off to 120.60, but the 10-year yield is still lower by about two and a half basis points on the day, and the two 10-year spread still compressing by about four. Based on the bottom, this is supposed to be the top for the day. Well, that trend would certainly uh, be a continuation. Here's our czar. Pretty amazing, huh, guys? Look at this. Totally a coincidence, right? Look how many coincidences I see here. Total randomness. Total randomness. Total randomness. Uh, it's in the swing trading course. And I'll put these newer ones uh, in that course because these are pretty good. You're the best thing about me, the best thing ever. You're the best thing about me. Cool. Kitty Cat Oscar Mike. Everything's kicking off the top. This is, you know, this is why we're supposed to take profit. This is why we're still supposed to take profit. Gold whipping out right where it should be. All right, everything's right as rain. Wow, look at this. This is a mess. Let's get this updated. All right, let's see what's going on here. Oh, that's pretty good. What do you think, guys? Knuckles? Boom, right? That's pretty good, no? Let's see, somewhere around here. <laughs> Beautiful. Very nice. Thank you, Turkish Lira. Beautiful. Peso, not the right time of month to be trading it. Okay.
Okay. Just not a good month to have traded it. Just didn't get the swing that I like. It's all right. doesn't have to be every time. But 60% of the time, it works every time. That's our Zara. Look at that. Cool. Well, can I answer any questions before I go for the weekend? I hope you guys have been practicing things like relative strength, some, something we covered a couple of times this week. But check this out. Here's the interesting thing, right? I've taught you that this is a profit zone. This is a profit zone. Right, and we don't even have one here. This is a, a take profit zone. This is a take profit zone, and this is a take profit zone. And here we are, Friday, and these guys are taking profit. These guys are taking profit. These guys are taking profit. These guys are taking profit, and uh, nobody knows what's going on here. <laughs> and this, WTF, right? Cool though, right? I mean, this is what's supposed to happen. Barry says huge volatility. I don't feel that way. I feel actually that it was basically a boring week. And if you're a swing trader, like just on these dollar pairs, you know, what does this mean? Dollar, right? Dollar was weak, dollar was weak, dollar was weak, dollar was weak, dollar was weak. And dollar was even weak against CAD, just not to the same extremes. Like, so how hard was it? All you had to do was be a dollar bear. And we talked, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, I spent a lot of time, you know, rehashing the idea that the most difficult thing to do is make a decision. But once you've made a decision, if you're wrong, you probably won't lose any money. You might, but it won't be very much if you do. You could even possibly make money. But it just essentially is a week where you don't get a lot of opportunities because the market doesn't agree currently. The market conditions are just not favorable to your bias. You were maybe you're right, but just not this week, right? The market just wasn't conducive for you to to really trade but if you were right then you nailed all three four five of these right six of these you could have made money on okay you see what i mean and everyone that just sort of lurks in the corners in the shadows, they're not really a bull, they're not really a bear, they're kind of watching, what's he doing, what's she doing? Like the person in the examination room kind of looking around, what are other people putting for an answer, right? The, the, those people don't succeed. So you're going to have to make a decision here. And when the market agrees with your decision, you'll have a week like this where you're just crushing it. And if the market doesn't agree with you currently, it's just a timing thing, then, then I've even proven to you, you still can make money, just well, probably won't be a lot of money. So, uh, I'm so sorry, Barry. I, uh, my concern is time. My concern is a lot. Um, I got stuff going on now that would just blow your mind. Um, so I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think what I can do, though, is start at least seriously, <laughs> seriously thinking, uh, seriously putting some plans together for uh, this portfolio management experience for you guys, right? So that general idea, I haven't thought it through. Uh, well, I spent maybe a couple hours preparing, right? But you're going to need at least five grand to put into a trading account, and then you're going to have to pay me like twelve hundred bucks to kind of monitor and be around and pay attention and set it up uh, and make it legitimate uh, for you as a portfolio manager. So you're going to need at least sixty-two hundred bucks. 
okay? But you will have a real, a real experience. Right? And you, you will be able to say, I did this for this team. I was a portfolio manager. This was my specialty. This was my track record trading real money. And remember, you'll pop five grand into a Trader's Way account, and they'll bump it up to 10,000 bucks for you. And from that, you pretend it's 10 million. But that sounds good, though, right? Yeah, well, you're going to need two or three years, right? You're going to need two or three years for a serious uh, uh, investor to even consider you because what they're going to look for is how did you perform as the market changed, as market conditions changed. And they generally don't change a lot over a course of a year, right? But, right? Yeah, so, you know, at the very least, you know, you're going to need that kind of time frame. The NASDAQ 100 futures touching fresh lows now, 68.05, down 11 hand as we did move lower into the data, and we continue to move lower, led by the NASDAQ. The S&P is moving back towards the lows as well. European bourses are on, on session highs. Up. You're the best thing about me. All right, I'll turn that up. Okay. So I've done similar tests in the past, um, setting people up with bigger money, and uh, it just hasn't worked. <laughs> what can I say? It hasn't worked. So it, it's, I think, an important step in people's maturity, have that level of responsibility, knowing a couple of things. One, uh, it's real now. You have so it's more than a couple of things. One, it's real now. This is a true opportunity, right? So it changes your mindset. Two, you have to perform. Now there's real pressure, right? You, you're not allowed to have a bad day per se, right? And then three, people are watching that this is important. And if you F things up this month, you're going to F it up for all three years because people are going to go back and say, well, what the hell did you do back in February 2018? Oh, well, I, uh, I went crazy and I just, I did, I forgot every rule there ever was and I just, uh, I just decided to lose 40% of the account. Well, guess what? You're effing fired. You know what I mean? You're like, you're dead. You're dead meat. Nobody's going to give you money. Oh, well, every once in a while you lose 40% of your money. Oh, well, that's okay. Here's 10 million. Go for it. So, you know what I mean? So it's like you kind of need to go through this. Um, so I can set that up for you and give you that experience. And Right? You got it? Makes sense? Or am I wasting my time on this to set this up for you? I guess I shouldn't. I shouldn't have too bad. Whatever. So, I don't know. I will set that up, and we'll see where it goes. Okay. So, have a wonderful weekend. And then I'll do my best for the swing trading thing maybe next month because uh, I got a Harvard thing coming up next week, and I, I don't think I'll be able to do it. Um, you know what? I probably could do it. I can do it from Cambridge. Yeah. All right. Let me ponder it. All right. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. Cheers. Thank you for being a client to Trader's Way.
We appreciate you.